So the question then becomes about who owns the robots? I mean, if you're going to go down that road, ultimately this comes to a question about who's going to own the robots, right? So, so I mean, just to, just to riff off this for a second, because I think there's a really important point in what you mean. So here's, well, let's bring the election into this, right? So, you know, the running neck and neck in the polls, right? Now, here's my short version as to why this works. Because politics is about narrative. It's not about facts. Facts are annoying. Facts are inconvenient. Global warming, great example, right? So here's Trump's narrative, and it's not wrong. There's a guy called Gary. Gary's 29 years old, and he's a skilled electrician, and he works in Gary, Indiana, in a big plant. It's 1989. It's the end of the Cold War. It's a bright new dawn. And five years later, the plant shuts down. So do all the parts suppliers, because they were all contingent upon the plant. And basically, the entire city takes a massive income hit, and unemployment goes through the roof. Well, being a rugged individualist, he doesn't care. He's never been unemployed. He'll get another job. And all the politicians that came through last time said there's going to be retraining, and he can be a computer programmer and all that. And maybe Gary could. I mean, his 49-year-old co-worker probably couldn't. But maybe Gary could. But guess what? They actually were more interested in tax cuts. So that didn't happen. So he bootstrapped himself into a job, and he got a job in a call center. And as I mentioned earlier, five years later, that call center went from Indiana to India. And now Gary works for the world's largest employer, which is Walmart, for 11.62 an hour when he started off at double that when he was half that age. And every day he reads in the paper how he's about to be replaced by a robot, along with all of his mates. And the people who are super excited about this are Wall Street, the people who got all their assets bailed out when there was a crisis, and then the governor of his state stuck it on him because there's a budgetary austerity, you need to cut spending. So you bail out the people with assets and incomes and then stick the cost on the public budget by slashing it. You think people can't figure this sh out? Now, some of that's true, some of that's not true. That's an entirely fictional character, but I completely enraptured you with that, didn't I? <laughs> now tell me Clinton's narrative. Before you get to questions, sir, tell me Clinton's narrative. You can't, can you? That's why it's running neck and neck. Because he's tapping into something very, very real. And what exactly are me and my class offering in exchange as an alternative? I don't even know what it is. 